Here's a short introduction to the idea of social and planetary boundaries. Humanity is currently using natural resources far beyond what the planet can take, and yet at the same time millions of people living in appalling deprivation. We have to tackle these crises together, and it would help if we had a vision of where it is we want to get to. So here's one idea that could provide a compass for the journey ahead. In 2009, Johan Rockström at the Stockholm Resilience Centre brought together a group of leading Earth system scientists, and they came up with the concept of planetary boundaries. They identified nine Earth system processes, like climate regulation, the freshwater cycle, and the nitrogen cycle, which are critical for keeping the Earth in a stable state known as the Holocene, which has been so beneficial to humanity for the past 10,000 years. Under too much pressure from human activity, any one of these processes could be pushed into abrupt and even irreversible change. So the scientists drew up a set of boundaries under their danger zones, and the area that these created they called a safe operating space for humanity. Well, that may be environmentally safe, but it could also be deeply socially unjust, leaving millions of people in deprivation and extreme inequality. So how about adding to the picture the idea of social boundaries? Just as there's an environmental ceiling beyond which lies unacceptable environmental degradation, so too there's a social foundation below which lies unacceptable human deprivation. What should those deprivations be? Well, human rights provide the cornerstone for defining that. And the process of redefining the Millennium Development Goals is going to come up with the top priorities to tackle now. But in advance of that process, one indication of an international consensus around those deprivations comes from the issues that governments have raised in the run-up to the UN's Rio Plus 20 conference on environment and development. And the top 11 social concerns that governments have raised form the 11 social dimensions here. Issues such as freedom from hunger, freedom from income poverty and energy poverty, from gender inequality, freedom from ill health and illiteracy. So between the social boundaries and the planetary boundaries lies an area shaped like a donut, which is both safe and just space for humanity. And if global economic development is socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable, it would bring humanity into this space and allow us to thrive here. Rockström and the other scientists estimate that humanity has already crossed at least three of the nine planetary boundaries on climate change, on nitrogen use, and on biodiversity loss. And likewise, data indicate that we are falling far below the social foundation on every dimension for which indicators are available. So, for example, 13% of people don't have enough food to eat, 19% of people live without electricity, and 21% of people live in income poverty. But the really striking story here is that ending those deprivations need put no pressure on planetary boundaries. Meeting the calorie needs of everybody living in hunger would take just 1% of the world's current food supply. Getting electricity to everybody who lives without it would add less than 1% to global carbon emissions. And getting everybody out of income poverty would take just a fraction of 1% of global income. It's wealth, not poverty, that's putting this planet under pressure. So there's a quick tour of the donut, a global compass to help us guide humanity through the 21st century. To find out more, you can download the full discussion paper at oxfam.org, and I'll be blogging about the issues it raises, so please join the conversation.